Hello and welcome to Nighttime Tales. My name is Grace Ekirapa and today we're reading the book A Tiny Seed, the story of Wangari Madhai. This book was written by Nicola Resic and it was illustrated by Maya Mashak. In a village on the slopes of Mount Kenya in East Africa, a little girl worked in the fields with her mother. Her name was Wangari. Wangari loved being outside. In her family's food garden, she broke up the soil with her machete. She pressed tiny seeds into the warm earth. Can you see what plants Wangari is planting in the garden? I can see an avocado, a carrot, a beetroot, some spinach, a pear, and some peas. Her favorite time of the day was just after sunset. When it got too dark to see the plants, Wangari knew it was time to go home. She would follow the narrow paths through the fields, crossing rivers as she went. Wangari was a very clever child and couldn't wait to go to school. But her mother and father wanted her to stay home and help them. But when she was seven years old, her big brother persuaded her parents to let her go to school. Do you think Wangari's brother did the right thing? I think so. All boys and girls should have the chance to go to school. This was the start of an amazing journey. Let's find out more. She liked to learn. Wangari learned more and more with every book she read. She did so well at school that she was invited to study in the United States of America. Wangari was excited. She wanted to know more and more about the world. How was Wangari able to learn so much? That's right, she read many books and worked very hard. Now she has the chance to go to university. At the American University, Wangari learned many new things. She studied plants and how they grow and she remembered how she grew playing games with her brothers in the shade of the trees in the beautiful Kenyan forest. The more she learned, the more she realized that she loved the people of Kenya. She wanted them to be happy and free. And the more she learned, the more she remembered her African home. When she had finished her studies, she returned to Kenya. But her country had changed. Huge farms stretched across the land, women had no wood to make cooking fires, the people were poor, and the children were hungry. This was not the Kenya Wangari remembered. How do you think this made Wangari feel? Wangari knew just what to do. She taught the women how to plant trees from seeds. The women sold the trees and used the money to look after their families. The women were very happy. Wangari had helped them feel powerful and strong. As time passed, the new trees grew into forests and the rivers started flowing again. Wangari's message spread across Africa and today, millions of trees have grown from Wangari's seeds. Wangari had worked hard, very hard, and people all over the world took notice and gave her a famous prize. It is called the Nobel Peace Prize and she was the first African woman to ever receive it. How do you think Wangari felt when she won the prize? I think so too. She looks very happy. Wangari died in 2011 but we can think of her every single time we see a beautiful tree. And that's the end of our story. This is a beautiful book because it reminds us of so many things. It reminds us of conservation. Wangari Madai remains to be a hero. Second thing is she taught us that you don't have to be rich and famous to start. You can start anywhere you are and let your legacy live on. Thank you so much for staying with us and have a good night. See you next time.